Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United news. Lots to talk about this morning. Luis Enrique, manager talks. He's back in the equation. Also, Ten Hag and Pochettino forced to wait by Manchester United. We'll also have updates on Cristiano Ronaldo and... Transfer priority for Manchester United is not a CDM, it is a striker and it is Harry Kane. This is coming from The Athletic that Harry Kane is a priority, a transfer priority for Manchester United this summer. I'm having nightmares here, I'm having nightmares of Harry Kane and Pochettino at Manchester United. It's like a bad nightmare Spurs tribute act, isn't it? Forget the bootleg Beatles or no Oasis, we're going to put... Put, put back together the bottling Spurs side of the Champions League when they're both past it. Pochettino on the mountain coming down and, and Harry Kane 29. I mean, bloody hell. Do we, if that happens, do we ever learn as a football club taking cast-offs from other clubs and thinking it's going to work three years later? We did it with Mourinho. We've done it, bef we've done it with players before. Um, and now we're thinking about doing it with Harry Kane and Poch. We're getting the dream team back together. The dream team that won nothing is coming to Manchester United to help us win something that we've not won for ages. I mean, and we're going to spend loads of money doing it. No way, sis. No way, sis. No way. Um, anyway, let's see what happens. Um, I'm not talking about Will Smith. Um, um, yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, as I said, I will talk about it. It's a big redemption arc, that isn't it? Smack somebody and then uh, win, a, win an Oscar in 20 minutes. Normally in the UK, you do something wrong. Um, and, uh, you know, you're booed and castigated for a long, long time. But, you know, what a turnaround. Anyway, let's leave it at that. Let's get into the show. We'll talk a little bit about uh, Harry Kane in a moment and uh, Pochettino and Ten Hag and a few other bits. But let's let's start off uh, with uh, Luis Enrique, manager talks. This was something that came out last night. There's quite a few stories to update you with. We've got Fabrizio Romano on the show this afternoon as well. So we'll be able to ask him a lot of things about managers, transfers, outgoings, ingoings. So looking forward to that. I think we've got him on at half two live. So uh, we will have updates on this channel quite big uh, this afternoon. But let's start off with updates last night. A couple of stories coming in from the mail. Also, I think from the... Uh, let, don't, get, don't, don't get this wrong. Um, yeah, coming in from the Daily Mail. A couple of, a couple of stories coming in um, around the managerial situation. And um, ultimately, the story is thus that um, Luis Enrique is a strong contender for the Manchester United job and has many admirers within Old Trafford. The World Cup logistics won't help the situation. Uh, the likelihood of Luis Enrique uh, being Man United manager is currently being underplayed and he's seriously well-liked within Manchester United. Um, also in the, the mail, they're saying in relation to Ten Hag, Ten Hag has two other clubs. Sorry, this is that's from Romano. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, Pochettino is waiting to... Uh, Eric Ten Hag has been interviewed uh, by Man United and is waiting an offer amid interest from other clubs in England and Germany with Dortmund, one of the clubs. Pochettino remains a popular candidate, uh, candidate among United's playing squad. So effectively, we'll start off with the mail, then we'll move to you, uh, to Romano's comments last night and a few other bits as well. So Luis, en Luis Enrique, let's start off with him. Fantastic coach, currently the coach of Spain, did a decent job at Barcelona, really well liked, good standard of football, good style of football, sorry. Um, I don't think anybody would mind Luis Enrique. I think a lot of people would say he might even be a better option than Ten Hag. But the reality is, um, is he being underplayed and is he a serious contender for the job? No and no. Um, I, I don't like to use this because we seem to use it quite a lot. I feel that this is stalling tactics. I feel that this is buying time for Pochettino. United, whether they wanted it to, to be out there or not interviewed Ten Hag a week ago. What's happened in a week? Nothing. Nothing's happened. We've not nothing is happening. So how do you fill that gap? How do you fill another week? Everybody knows Eric Ten Hag was interviewed last week and we've not offered him the job. Why have we not offered him the job? Because we're stalling for something. How do you try and fill that gap? Oh Luis Enrique, we're really interested fucking we need to fill the gap. Luis Enrique, we'd love Luis Enrique knowing we've got no chance of getting Luis Enrique. He is the Spain manager until Christmas. Do not even think about things like, well, he could do both. Like, he's got internationals in the summer, in June, for Spain. Like, how's that going to work with transfers? He's then got preparation for a World Cup from September to November, and then a World Cup in December. We are not appointing... A, well, ne never say never with United, but you cannot appoint a manager that's focused on a World Cup for Spain. So, 
And you can't keep you, you can't write another season off by saying, "Will you join us in January?" Because you're writing a season off. So we we can't go for him. Great manager, we can't go for him. We can't go for Pep. We can't go for Klopp. We can't go for Nagelsmann. Like they, they they'd all be great managers, at, uh, great manager choices at Manchester United, but we can't get them. And Luis Enrique, Luis Enrique is ungettable. So we need to forget about Luis, Luis Enrique and see it for what I believe it is. It's a smokescreen. It's a story to kill time. Oh, we're in for Luis Enrique. We're going to interview Luis Enrique. There's no point. Absolutely no point. It's like serving up a Big Mac to a vegetarian. There's just no. There's no point to it. There's, there's nothing's going to happen. So why? What? Why would we do this? I personally just think it, it, it is filling time. It's filling time because we know that Ten Hag's been interviewed. We know he's, we're waiting for him to be offered a job. And United are stalling. And I, I believe they are stalling because of Pochettino. They're trying to... Basically, I think they're waiting for PSG to decide they don't want Pochettino so we can get him. And I think PSG have said, we're not sure at the moment. So United are like, wow, wow you're wait, making us wait. Like, like that dog underneath the table waiting for PSG scraps. Or even better, we're like a, we're like a bin like this, with our mouth open, waiting for PSG to decide they don't want Pochettino and scrape him into the bin, which is Manchester United. Um, but PSG at the moment, they're deciding whether they want to throw him away or not. And we're just waiting. I think that's what, what's happening. We've interviewed Ten Hag because we have to interview Ten Hag to make it look like we want him. But really, they want Pochettino and they're waiting for PSG to decide whether they want him or not. Amateurish, but I think that's what's happening. And I think the Luis Enrique story is complete nonsense. I don't... I don't it's not logical. It doesn't make any sense. Um, can you ask Fabrizio about Bellotti's situation? He's available for free in the summer from Torino. Would be a good option for us. Well, I will. I've got a list. I will. Add, I will ask about that. No problem at all. That's from Knight RZ. Okay. I do take requests. Um, so yes, that's the situation. Luis Enrique is apparently under consideration, but it makes absolutely no sense as far as I'm concerned. Fabrizio Romano has said over the weekend, Pochettino is waiting to understand Man United's position and Ten Hag is waiting to see what United wants to do. Ten Hag has two other clubs interested in him for next season. He dreams of a possibility to work in the Premier League. Nothing has been agreed between Ten Hag and Manchester United yet. And that's from uh, that's from uh, Fabrizio Romano. So, I mean, ultimately, um, I don't think Pochettino is waiting on anything. I think Manchester United are waiting on Pochettino. And I think Eric Ten Hag is waiting on Manchester United. Uh, Andy Mitten says United have spoken to three managerial con candidates. Prospective players have been asking the club who will be the next manager, while agents of these players were being sounded out. I mean, I don't even think that even, can even be considered an update. It's just, it's just, you know, players that we're speaking to want to know who the manager is going to be. Breaking news: Slow Sports news. There, player that might sign for Manchester United wants to know who the new manager is going to be. Breaking news. Um, it's not breaking news. It's, it's obvious news. Um, as for speaking to three man managerial candidates, I don't believe it. I think United are only ever speaking to two. Um, it, it makes no sense to speak to... As I said, Luis Enrique, absolute waste of time. There's, there's, there's no point wasting time. And I think that's what... I suppose, in my opinion, I think United are wasting time. I think they are wasting time because they are waiting time on Pochettino because they could just offer the job to Eric Ten Hag. And it's interesting, isn't it? We were talking about this on Friday night about two clubs being interested in Eric Ten Hag. And some fans wanted to say, nonsense, he's got no other offers, he's just trying to force United to offer him a job. Well, I think he is off trying to force Man United to offer him a job. But I think it's ridiculously arrogant to think that other clubs don't want Eric Ten Hag. Remember, this is the manager that if Pep was leaving this summer, they would be interviewing Eric Ten Hag. If Klopp was leaving Liverpool, they would be interviewing Eric Ten Hag. He is a very well thought of and sought after manager. Um, don't listen to this hype nonsense around Pochettino that the media and club and players want to build, that Pochettino is somehow on a different level to Eric Ten Hag. Um, Eric Ten Hag's reputation across European football is very, very, very good. And there will be clubs that want to, buy, that want to acquire him. I know for a fact a German club, I said that on Friday, I just didn't know what German club it is. It's starting to look more and more that, that like it could be Dortmund. Now, if it's Dortmund that want Eric Ten Hag, we need to move fast because he's a, he'd be perfect for Dortmund. And also, I think the Dortmund manager would be a little bit unlucky to be getting sacked to replace Eric Ten Hag because he's not done terribly. They're second in the Bundesliga. They're not doing terribly. But it just shows you um, how... 
sought after Eric Ten Hag is if Dortmund are thinking about replacing their manager to grab the opportunity and it'd be a very 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 good appointment for a Dortmund side that obviously acquires world-class talents develops them and, 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 and competes very very well against a dominant Bayern Munich I mean it's sort of what we want Manchester United to do just to get back competing with Man City would be nice. I mean, I don't want to ultimately be Dortmund, but I wouldn't mind being Dortmund at the moment, second in the league and at least competing um, with an exciting style of football and development. Um, so look, there will be there are clubs, and anybody who thinks that there aren't clubs after Eric Ten Hag, just look at the volume of people that are saying that, that, that there that there are. Uh, your slow sports news impression is world class, mate. Oh, that's very nice of you, Mister Nobody. Thank you very much. Hope we're all doing this well this week. Of course, we've got for, I don't know what to think. I don't know what to think. We've got Man United back playing on Saturday. Um, I just don't know what I don't know what to think about that. In some ways, I enjoyed last week because I didn't have to think about Maguire and Co. putting a United shirt on. And uh, yeah, but that that brings me back to another thing. What they were saying in the Daily Mail about Pochettino being uh, well liked by the playing staff. I mean, I'll only repeat this again. It's Monday morning. I'm not going to get too stressed. What the hell has it got to do with the players? Who the manager's going to be? If you're not going to listen to the fan, I mean, I suppose I put it like this. I thought about this this morning. So 85% of our fan base, at least, want Eric Ten Hag as the manager. 15% want Pochettino, right? Of, of which some of that 15% will be trolls from other clubs getting involved in United polls. Um, some players want Pochettino, right? So the club are going to listen to players over the vast majority of their fan base. How wrong is that? Players who play for United because we pay them to play for us, who don't even support the team. Most of those United players don't support Man United. They're here to do a professional job, admittedly, but they're paid to do it. Fans who pay to support this club and follow this club year after year after year won't be listened to, but players will. How wrong is that? How wrong would it be for the club to listen to players over their own bloody fans who pay everybody's wages? So that's point one. Point two, under Sir Alex Ferguson, do you really think when they were replacing Sir Alex Ferguson, there was players going, I oh, quite fancy Moyes? You know, it just wouldn't happen. These players are overpowered at United. It's well known. It's a big flaw. And even if we appoint Eric Ten Hag, there are still about 70 or 80 other big issues that need to be solved at United. And one of those big issues is the power some of these footballers have in that football club. Now, I'm not going to name names, but you know who they are. There are certain people in that football club who are players who've basically got a WhatsApp line into the CEO and the board and can bypass the manager. That never happened in our most successful period. That never happened with Sir Alex Ferguson. No player could go over the manager's head and get to the board. And the board wouldn't entertain it. But this board will. This board will converse, converse with players behind the manager's back. That is not right. These players are pawns in a game of chess. They should be told what to do, and if they don't like it, they can piss off. But United have overhyped average players and made them powerful in the football club, and we're on the biggest run without a trophy in, in decades. So we've overpowered shit players, and we're not winning trophies. Don't fucking listen to them. Whether it's Ronaldo or it's Phil Jones, do not listen to players on what manager they want. Because ultimately, they need to learn their place within that football club. You do as you're told, or you get out the door. If you don't like the manager, piss off. If you don't like the manager and you want to stay, get your head down and work hard, because I don't see enough of that. We should not be consulting any player. And the senior players in that squad, let's not forget, Captain Harry Maguire, would you listen to him? Bruno Fernandes, on his form at the moment and his petulance, would you listen to him? Ronaldo? who's not going to be here in a year or two. Would you listen to him, really, for a long-term plan? I mean, I wouldn't listen to any of them. They've all got reasons not to listen to them. I wouldn't listen to them. I agree, but at least they might play for the manager, says Robert McCormack. But I think that's a very dangerous thing, Robert. Um, recruiting a manager because the players will play for them. That's That says everything, doesn't it? So if we, if we recruit the wrong manager, they won't try. I mean, that, that, I would rather recruit the wrong manager and piss them all off. I don't, I don't want to please those players. That some in their head they've got this completely the wrong way they th they're so up their own arses and they're so privileged they think that we and the club and the manager is there to serve them they're there to serve the fans the club and the manager it's gone the wrong way at United completely the wrong way so I just would not 
Um, I would not be listening to players at all. Um, and, and, and no no club should be listening to players, not just Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea. You shouldn't be listening to players. It, it's completely wrong. And I'd, But the scary thing is, at our club, factually, they listen to pl- players, sometimes over the manager. It's a joke. There are players who've got massive power within that football club. And I'm not even talking about Ronaldo. But even before Ronaldo came in, there were players in that club that you would cry at the power they've got in there. You'd be like, what? Yeah, well, it's true. Uh, Anyway, talking about players, let's move on to the next thing. Um, This is from The Athletic, and it's from Laurie Whitwell, who we know gets a lot of his information from Manchester United. Some people say he's a little Manchester United in himself. He basically is the voice of Manchester United through The Athletic. I think that's probably a little bit unfair, but he, he doesn't say many things controversial. He won't talk about tactics, and he doesn't talk about anything negative to do with the club very often. So... Maybe he's talk- maybe he's spoken to the club about this. Maybe he hasn't. But what he's saying is that Manchester United are yet to appoint a new manager. Slow sports news there from Laurie. Slow sports news. We're yet to appoint a new manager. Breaking news this Monday morning. But no, he says Manchester United... I was joking. There was a comma. Manchester United are yet to appoint a new manager, which is complicating talks with potential signings. Slow sports news again. But they're aiming to wrap it up before the season ends. Oh, good. We're going to get a manager before the season ends. Great. Manchester United want Harry Kane, regardless of who's in charge next season, with Ten Hag and Pochettino, the leading contenders. Harry Kane would be prime among their thoughts at Manchester United. A year on from conversations between Woodward and Levy, Woodward informed him of United's interest in Kane last summer, but conceded any move would have to wait until 2022 due to budgetary uh, um, constraints. Well, I mean, again, we're quoting... Is Ed Woodward still in charge of this fucking football club? I mean, realistically, what we did last summer should be burned and thrown in the bin. I don't care what you did last summer. I know that's a and that that's a horror film as well. So yeah, I, I'm not interested in what we were going to do last summer because we had a different CEO. Um, they also go on to say that Ronaldo remaining at United without Champions League football has been a subject of debate at the club, but sources believe Portugal reaching the World Cup, which they should do tomorrow, would mean Ronaldo wanting to keep his club situation steady in preparation for a Christmas World Cup. Um, And this is the thing that worried me the most, and this is from Laurie Whitwell. He says, Manchester United will be attempting to add a centre-forward to the squad in the summer. Ideally, they want two midfielders, one defensive, one offensive, and a right-sided winger. Adding a striker is a priority. Are we about to see um, what we feared before last summer, which is that we're suddenly in a situation where Manchester United are prioritising a striker over the midfielder. I mean, look, it says that we want ideally want two midfielders, a defensive and a box-to-box, but a striker is the priority. Why is a striker the priority? When are we going to... We, we, we've been... I mean, we started this season and every fan said, we've got a good team, maybe we can, maybe we can fight for the title, but that midfield's the problem. Lo and behold, our midfield has lost nearly every midfield battle they've played in the Premier League this year. And yet we're still talking about the strike as the priority. And and this is the problem at Man United. And, and this is what, I mean, again, this is just my opinion again. We're going for Harry Kane. Okay, I predicted this weeks ago that we'd go for Harry Kane. And, and people were talking about Jonathan David and Isaac and, New, uh, and Darwin Nunes and, and, and other players. And I said, I reckon we'll go for Harry Kane because I don't think anything's changed at this football club. Harry Kane is the player we would try and buy two years ago, four years ago, six years ago. He's a shirt-selling, big signing that gets everybody excited, and that is what United do under the Glazers. We want to see a change. We want to see Eric Ten Hag and a, and a new direction where we're buying players for 40, 50 million instead of buying these big marquee signings that never actually work and managers that have had better days elsewhere. But ultimately, I feel we're hurtling towards Poch and Harry Kane this summer. And I want to go Tan Hag and Kunku and 40, 50 million signings and a proper rebuild. But I feel we're heading towards Poch and Kane. And I've seen it. I've seen that before. It's the same as Mourinho and Lukaku and Pogba. And we've, we've, we've done this. We've done it. And it doesn't work. The big marquee signing when you've got more holes than a hedgehog's pillow doesn't work we need to plug four or five holes we need to clear the deadwood we don't need to add harry kane with most of our budget 
to Maguire and co and say, well, they played for England together and won sod all. Maybe they'll come to Man United and win sod all. I, I just, I think we've tried this before. If PSG sack Poch, pay him out, then make him sit out his contracts as Michael. And this absolute bullshit from our club chasing Harry Kane because City wanted him. So let's Poch to convince Kane it's a joke. We need Ten Hag ASAP, says PJ. Um, what I would say about Harry Kane is there's absolutely no doubt that he is a world-class striker. A couple of years ago, I was comparing him into comparing him to Anthony Martial. That just shows you how far Anthony Martial has fallen and how high Harry Kane's stock has risen um, from that point. And it was already pretty high. But there's no doubt that Harry Kane's a fantastic striker. But he's not going to make... The, the scary thing about Harry Kane is whether you think he's better than Ronaldo, the same as Ronaldo, or Ronaldo's better. We've had a season of a really good number nine at United and we've seen how bad it's been at times where we just can't create chances or you know, build any um, momentum even though we've got a great striker. Harry Kane will be the same as Ronaldo but we're going to spend all our budget on it. Harry Kane's going to cost 100 million quid. We're going to spend at most 150. We cannot spend... Our marquee signing cannot be a striker. It's got to be a CDM has to be a CDM. That has to be the marquee signing because that's the biggest hole in the team. We cannot go and go, we'll be all right with McTominay and Fred for another year. We can't. Oh, and let's keep Matic. We can't do that. We've got to buy a midfielder. The midfielder has to be the marquee signing. But you know what United are like. Well, we've had a bad season. We need to sell some shirts. Let's get Harry Kane in and get everybody excited. And people will get excited because fans are very gullible. But it's completely the wrong signing. And that also, he's 29 in the summer. The great thing about Darwin Nunes or Jonathan David or or Isaac or, or Osman is they're all 22. They're 22. They've got three years before they hit their prime where we can develop them and make them better. Harry Kane's 29 this summer. 29. And you're going to spend 100 million quid on a 29-year-old who let's be honest, has had quite a lot of injuries through his career and we're going to spend £100 million on a 29-year-old. It's scary. It's Alexi Sanchez all over again and look what happened there. We've got to learn from our mistakes. Harry Kane is world-class, but how long is he going to be world-class? He might become world-glass very quickly because he's breakable. £100 million when you're trying to build a future. And we'd have to replace him in three or four years anyway, even if we're lucky. And, and to tell you what, Man United need to start looking at injury history because Harry Kane's ankles aren't great. He has problems with his ankles. He's actually done quite well over the last 18 months. But if you look at his injury history, it always seems to be his ankle. So they're not gonna, he's not going to get new ankles, is he? He's going to have problems with his ankles when he's older. We've got to avoid players where there's an injury question mark and avoid players that we've tried in the last nine years and avoid players that are at actually that age profile at that price. You can't use 75% of your transfer budget on a 29-year-old striker. You can't do that. We've got to look differently. We've, As I said so many times, there is a path that is well-trodden where you bring in a manager that used to be good, Pochettino, and you spend a lot of money on a shirt seller, Harry Kane. And you hope it works, but it's not worked yet. In 10 years, that, that, that strategy hasn't worked. Or you go that way and you go with Eric Ten Hag, who says, I know a player for 40 million, let's get him, let's get that one, let's get that one. You buy three or four players and you start your rebuild. Or you go the other route and you buy one and a half player and you do what you've been doing for the last while. The scary thing is, I think this board and these owners are going to go down the trodden path because that they're the ones who've made us go down that path so many times over the last 10 years. But we desperately need to go down this way. Hi, Mark. Kane and Pochettino, both serial losers. I'm scared of what's to come, says JV. Well, ultimately, if we did get Kane and Pochettino, I'm sure some people would get quite excited. I think the press would be running around with their tops off. Imagine that. They all bloody love Harry Kane anyway. I mean... Wasn't, wasn't it Gary Neville last year who was basically saying Harry Kane should force a move from Spurs? Yet when Pogba does it, he's public enemy number one. And the same with the media as well. Oh yeah, Harry Kane should be leaving Spurs, the club that he's been at all his life. And he should be, you know, he should be refusing to train and downing tools to get a move to Man City for money and, and trophies. That's what he should be doing. Yet when a, when a Pogba does it, it's completely different. So... Of the press would absolutely love Pochettino and Kane at Man United. It would be their dream. 
shirts off, running around. Gary Neville probably be there doing it with them. I'm joking. Maybe he would, maybe he wouldn't. But so the press would absolutely love it. But as a United fan, I'm a little bit confused as to what I w- what I'm supposed to love about that prospect of Pochettino, who has been got sacked by Spurs three years ago and has messed up at PSG, being reunite- reunited with Harry Kane, who got him sacked three years ago, and is now 29. I, I, what what what? Even if we got Pochettino and Kane from Spurs when they did really, really well four years ago or five years ago, they didn't win anything. <laughs> so, And it's not really a plan for the future, is it? Because Kane's 29. So I, I, I fail to see what, what I'm getting excited about, a huge risk that wasn't that successful for Spurs anyway and is now three years older. I don't, I don't get what's exciting about that. Like I said, it's like a, it's like a Spurs tribute act at Manchester United. The bootleg Beatles, no Oasis. As I said, it's like it terrifies me. I don't know about you, but I'll have a meltdown if we get Pochettino's as Connor. I don't, I don't know whether I'll, I'll have a meltdown. Um, part of me's part, part of me's fully expecting it, so I don't know whether I'd have a meltdown. But I'd be massively disappointed, massively disengaged, and. Um, Ten Hag would, would massively excite this fan base and give us some optimism. I think Pochettino will be the cycle of Man United. It'll be a three-year cycle. He'll probably have a decent year one because they'll spend some money in the summer. Decent year one, get us into top four. Year two, we'll stagnate. Year three, he'll get the sack. Um, that, that's what happened. happen. Welcome to the Members Club, Chris Pankhurst. And also as well, I've got to be honest... Is Harry Kane the preparation for Ronaldo leaving? And if that happens, we've basically got the English dressing room. The big players in the England dressing room, Rashford, Kane, Maguire, Luke Shaw. I'm, and I'm sorry, that's not a winning mentality dressing room, is it? That, that That's a team set to fight for fourth for the next three years. Um, and I, I'd argue that with anybody. I'm sorry, if your influences in your dressing room are Harry Maguire and Harry Kane... What have they won? I, 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 I actually think neither of those two players have won anything, have they? Have they? Has Harry Kane won anything? Has, has Harry Maguire ever won anything? And they'd be the two biggest influences in our dressing room if Ronaldo left and Harry Kane came in. So, yeah, it would. Um, it, it, I, I like Harry Kane. I think people. I don't really give a shit what Spurs fans think because it's not the Spurs stand; it's the United stand. Um, I do like. I think I do think Harry Kane's a great player. And I think people get effect, take offence when you say you don't want them. But this is our club. This is Manchester United. I know Harry Kane's a really good striker. And if we had a really good team and we wanted to win the title in the next two years, I might ha- adding Harry Kane to it for the next two years probably isn't a bad idea. But this is where football fans divide, really, because people will be going, oh, Goldbridge doesn't want Harry Kane. I don't want Harry Kane. I absolutely do not want Harry Kane at Manchester United. I don't think he's the right player at the right time and I think he's ridiculously expensive for a 29-year-old. Um, I can understand why Man City would want Harry Kane because they've won the title last year. They're, they're competing for the Champions League each year. He's the final piece in a puzzle. Or is the icing on the cake? We haven't baked the cake, so why buy the icing? That's my issue with Harry Kane, is that if you want him for the next two years to, to add something to a really good team, great. But we haven't built the team. We just get, as I say, it's like it's like getting the best Formula One driver, and before you've built the car, like, oh yeah, look, we've got Verstappen, great. But we haven't got a car. We've got to build the car first. And United just seem to fail in this approach every year because all they really want to do is make Team Viewer happy, make Adidas happy, sell the three kits we're going to put out this summer. And how do you do that? You buy. You have, You need a marquee signing, but where 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 I think United fail is actually. I'd be interested to know as an experiment. How many shirts do you think United will sell this summer if they get Eric Ten Hag, and Kunku, Chumini, Anthony, and um, Akanji? So Akanji and Kunku, Anthony, Chumini, Ten Hag. Four signings and Ten Hag. Do you think you'd sell more shirts with those signings and that manager than you'd sell with Pochettino, Harry Kane and Declan Rice? I actually think Man United fans aren't thick. And I think Man United fans would be more enthusiastic and buy more shirts with Ten Hag, Anthony, Nkunku, Chouamini and Akanji 
than they would with Poch, Kane and Rice. It might be close, but I actually believe United fans aren't stupid and they'd be more excited about the season with the four signings scenario with Ten Hag than they would be with the Harry Kane. But United are so out of touch in the way that they run their football club that I think they think they will sell more shirts if they get Harry Kane in than everything like that. And ultimately, we will be a better team anyway, which will generate them more money. We'll be a better team with those four signings than we would be with them. Uh, Enrique, the manager that no one asked for, but the board give you anyway. Sport for choice. We're not going to get him. Kane wants trophies. Why go to United? Spurs are a better side. Well, look, it's not, our, it's not, it's not for us to talk about Harry Kane's next club. But if he leaves Spurs to come to United, he's a mercenary. What, pure and simple, he's a complete mercenary if he comes to Man United. Because if you're leaving Spurs to win trophies, you don't come to Man United. Like we're not going to win major trophies. We won't even be in the bloody Champions League. So. Yeah, that, that is an aspect, but that's down to Harry Kane, that is. That's not down to Manchester United. Um, and also, let me just say something from the weekend as well. Um, I'm not going to start singing, Ooh, I'm blind by the lights. That's something from the weekend. Um, but Pogba over the weekend and, and comments that PSG, Juventus, Real Madrid, Barcelona are interested in him, but they don't know whether they can afford his wages, so United have still got a possibility of keeping him. I love Paul Pogba as a player. I think he's had a very inconsistent six years at United. We've never been in a title race. And I think that if Paul Pogba, and I've just I've just called Harry Kane a mercenary if he comes to United. If Paul Pogba stays at United, he's a mercenary as well. Because and I don't I don't think he will. I think Paul Pogba respects the sport and himself enough to realise that this is his last contract. And does he want to just win a World Cup and, and, and things that he won at Juventus? Or does he actually want to win some league titles in a Champions League? Um, and he's not going to do that at United. And I think Paul Pogba's 29 now as well. So if Paul Pogba wants to win things, he's got to leave United in the summer. And if he stays at United, he's staying for the money. Because we've there is no prospect of us winning the title or the Champions League in the next three years. So Paul Pogba is staying at United for three years, a club where... We've not got the best out of him. He's not got the best out of himself. And he's never been near a Champions League or a Premier League title. If, if Paul Pogba stays at United, he's staying for the money. Um, and that's not my decision. That's not your decision. I hope he doesn't do that. I hope he leaves. But if he signs a new contract at United, he's coming for the money. If Harry Kane comes to Man United, he's coming for the money. Like You can't you can't come to United to win trophies. That's not That, that can't be what, what you're thinking is going to happen at the moment. You, you, that's not what we're about Mark maybe when idiots uh, met Poch and Ten Hag one question asked do you have transfer window who would you go for it's in line with the philosophy of club winner says James Howell I was happy last two weeks now United come back make my weekend sad and angry says Jay well we've got Leicester on Saturday evening haven't we I would hope that we win that um, yeah uh, somebody just said can you do a priority poll uh, so I will just do this just while we uh, move on to the next topic uh, priority transfer so you can vote on this we'll go CDM uh, striker centre back and I suppose right winger there we go get voted in the chat then you can vote there uh, Pogba has to stay United held his hostage why shouldn't he eat before he leaves when United ruined his future don't know what that means Milverton don't know what that means if he signs a new contract he ain't going anywhere Um Kane would work well either Ronaldo, but we're not in that conversation yet. Uh, Kane and Ronaldo would not work well at all. They're basically the same player in this, occupying the same spaces. It's the same as Cavani and Ronaldo. It wouldn't work. I, I presume if we're getting Kane, Ronaldo would be leaving. Mark, especially if the club signs Poch, we won't be winning anything in the near future, much less much less the future. Ten Hag, best chance of getting a title, says Amir. Um, well, we have got Fabrizio Romano on the show at um, half past two. We'll be live with that. So a lot of questions to put to him, um, of course. But... I think that in relation to the managerial situation, if you've tuned in a little bit late, some people are saying we're early. Remember the clocks went back in the UK. I don't know whether they go... Sorry, the clocks went forward in the UK. I don't know whether they go forward anywhere in the world. I'm, I'm intrigued by that now. Um, but yeah, it, it's quarter to 11, so normal 10 o'clock show, but it might be nine or something where you are, I don't know. But the clocks go for, have gone forward 
um, in the UK for British summer time. So it is actually still the same 10 o'clock show, but it might be different for some of you. Um, so the managerial situation is still occupying the headlines. Uh, uh, Luis Enrique is somebody that is now apparently going to be in talks with Manchester United. Uh, Pochettino and Ten Hag apparently still waiting on United. And confirmation, I suppose I would summarise it like this. And I don't, I've not heard anybody do this. So if Eric Ten Hag, Pochettino, Enrique are the three options for the United job, and I personally believe Enrique is not involved, I think it's between Pochettino and Ten Hag, this is how I read the situation. Eric Ten Hag, interviewed, waiting, and wanted by at least two other clubs, one of which is believed to be Dortmund, but certainly a German club. Eric Ten Hag has been waiting for a week. Pochettino not able to do anything because he's under contract for PSG. PSG waiting to think what they're going to do. United waiting with a bowl for the scraps. Luis Enrique, Spain manager, managing Spain in the World Cup in December, can't take the United job. Why is he even being linked to the United job? Not really involved. It's Ten Hag and it's Pochettino. Ten Hag we've interviewed, ready to take the job. A week later, United haven't given it him. I think we're waiting. I think we're waiting for PSG to decide that who their replacement is for Pochettino or whether they're going to get rid of Pochettino. And then if, if United can't get him, they'll go for Ten Hag. I think Ten Hag is United's second choice. And I think they're going. I think they're waiting to see what happens with Pochettino. And that makes me want to throw up, that does. But I think the Luis Enrique story or the Lopateu story or we're going to interview other candidates story, I think they're just filling time. Unfortunately, United are quite easy to read and I think they're filling time. I think they're filling time waiting to see what PSG want to do with Pochettino because we want Pochettino. And Eric Ten Hag is second choice and um, that's why there's the delay. Um, Sometimes, as I say, football is very, very simple to watch. It's very, very simple to read. And this United board, I believe, is quite simple to read. I think we probably are trying to sign Harry, sign Harry Kane because he's a shirt seller and he's a big signing. And that's what they do. And I think we want Pochettino because we want to put Poch with Harry Kane and Poch is what some of the players want and what some of the board want. It may, The more I say, it makes me want to throw up because it's disgusting. It's disgusting to completely ignore virtually your entire fan base for a selection of players that aren't good enough and a couple of board members who shouldn't be listened to but ultimately I think this is what we're doing I think we're waiting on Pochettino we're waiting for PSG to sort out a replacement and then we will go for Pochettino um, and also this we want to sort a manager out at some point in the next two months we could have sorted a manager out this week we could have had a manager sorted out this week and we could be talking to players for the summer Never forget that Man United could have appointed Ten Hag last week and we could be talking to players now saying this is our manager, let's get on with it. What are we doing? We're waiting for the scraps of PSG's table to get a manager nobody else wants some point in the next two months and then probably go and buy Harry Kane. It's great, isn't it? What manager brings most equity to our board, says Johnny. Well, it's uh, it'll be Ten Hag, won't it? Uh, sorry, Pochettino. Um, this is quite interesting. We've had 2,500 votes on who the priority transfer should be for United. 2% say right winger. 6% say centre-back. 5% say striker. 88% of you say CDM. So it's pretty clear what United fans think. They want Eric Ten Hag and they want a CDM as the priority. We're hearing that United want Pochettino and Harry Kane. It says it all. The board have never been in tune with the fans and that is always a recipe for failure and frustration. Man United's board is just not in tune with its fans and really it's because they don't want to be in tune. They don't want to listen to the fans because as the rumours were when Ed Woodward was in charge, the fans are seen as hysterical. They're seen as an inconvenience. They're a noise to be ignored. And that is stunning, isn't it? The greatest club in England, in my opinion, the greatest fan base in the world, in my opinion, ignored by the club. Some clubs listen to their fans, not this club. Uh, can you come sing Poch is at the wheel with me at Old Trafford, says Robert McCormack. No, I won't be singing that. It's going to be a hard, 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 hard time with Pochettino in charge if it happens. 
Anyway, we've got Fabrizio at half two. We'll be back live. You don't want to miss this because we will be talking about things like Harry Kane, the managerial situation, Chuamini, and a lot of other things um, as well. So make sure you tune in at half two. And I've got a big game, TUSFC, straight after that. Second leg against Barcelona. God, nervy times. But I look forward to speaking to you at half two with Fabrizio. Let's see what he can bring to the show. Got lots of things to ask him. And um, I do think we'll get some big updates on the manager this week as well. Um, a lot of journalists had a week off last week and they'll now be back at work and uh, they'll be looking for those uh, stories. So I do think we'll start to get a little bit more movement. But my feeling is that we are waiting on Pochettino. We're waiting for our uh, PSG to scrape their rubbish into the bin and then we'll take it. Thanks for watching. Speak to you in a bit.